Hi guys, welcome back to Elevate Chem. I'm Jesse and this is another concept video. This video is, is the first in five parts where we're going to be tackling the periodic table of elements and the trends that we can observe in it. Now to explore this concept, as always, we're going to be looking at a question because ultimately the best way to learn a concept is by learning how it's applied in an exam situation. And as always, the first thing I want you to tackle is this question here. It's from the WACE 2014 paper and it's question 38. So pause the video now, have a crack and I'll see you on the other side. Fantastic. I hope it all went well. Now there were certainly two ways of tackling this question and the one that I think is less preferred is by just memorizing all these facts. If you wanted to, you could memorize the trend in atomic radius, you could memorize the trend in first ionization energy, but I always think it's better to understand the concept because if you're given something unfamiliar, you're going to be able to apply that understanding. Now I'm going to skip over all this text at the start because I want to find out what is the actual question that I'm required to answer first and then I'll work out what information I need. So it says right here, state and explain the trend in atomic radius across the second period. Fantastic. Now conveniently, this table is full of the second period elements. But of course, if this wasn't given to us, we could always refer to our periodic table which is provided. Now there's actually two parts to this question. State and explain. It's very easy to skip over that first word, but you need to make sure you state the trend. So let's have a look at what it is. We see is the atomic number increases, what happens to our atomic radius? Well, it actually decreases as we go down this table, or if you were looking at your periodic table, as we go across the period. So I'm just going to write that down right away. As atomic number increases, and please note that I'm using some shorthand here, guys. Use full sentences in your exam. As atomic number increases, atomic radius decreases. So there's one mark. Now I need to give two marks worth of content to really explain why this is happening. Now there's a couple different ways of explaining this stuff, but I think the best way to look at it is by looking at the fact that protons are being added as we go across the period. So lithium has three protons, beryllium has four protons, and so on and so forth. In fact, atomic number is defined as the number of protons within that element. That's the primary difference here, guys. And as we add an additional proton to these shells, what happens is that there's more attractive energy pulling in those electrons. The increased positive charge from these uh, in the nucleus of each successive atom is going to attract all of these electrons more strongly. So I've drawn these two little diagrams to hopefully make it pr pretty clear. Lithium has three electrons, two of which are in its inner shell and only one of which is in its outer shell. And the neon right at the end here has 10, pro 10 uh, protons and of course 10 electrons overall as well with eight in its outer shell. And despite there being also more electrons, the most important thing when it comes to atomic radius is this number of protons. So what I'm going to write down here, guys, is I'm going to write there are more protons as we go across the period. And what does this do? This increases attraction of all outer shell electrons. Lowering their distance to the nuclei and hence the radius. So let's just take a step back here and make sure that we understand this. Stating it, pretty straightforward. As the atomic number increases, the atomic radius decreases, and we can see that just from the table given to us. But let's try and understand this stuff. As the atomic number increases, the number of protons also increase. 
and this increased positive charge in the nucleus of each successive atom attracts all of the electrons in the atom more strongly, which draws them in closer. So for lithium, there's only three protons pulling this electron in, whereas for neon, there's 10 protons pulling each of these electrons in, and this lowers the atomic radius. Fantastic. Let's jump into B. State and explain the trend in first ionization energy across the second period. Now, once again, it says state, so that's the first thing we better do. And I'm going to write down as atomic number increases first ionization energy. And let's see what happens. As our atomic number increases, the first ionization energy also increases. Now again, let's try and understand why. Now it actually relates back to the atomic radius that we found in part A. And we noticed that as the atomic, atomic number increased, the atomic radius decreased. And what does that mean for our electrons? Well, if our electrons are sitting significantly closer to the nucleus, there's a much stronger attraction there. But if our electrons are actually a lot further away, the attraction is significantly weaker. And this was the case of neon, and this was the case of lithium. Neon had those electrons significantly closer to the nucleus, whereas in the case of lithium, they were a lot further away. And this means that it takes much more energy to actually get this electron to pop out of its orbital. And that energy is known as the first ionization energy. So how do I actually write that into words? Well, we say, as the atomic number increases, increases, the electrons are closer to the nucleus and experience greater attraction. And what does this mean? If there's greater attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, this means that more energy is required to move, to move electron out of orbit, away from the nucleus, hence First ionization energy increases. And again, you'd want to be writing this in four words. But the principle that's going on here is as my atomic number goes up, there's more positive charge within this nucleus. And that means there's a greater attraction between the electrons and the, pro and the nucleus or the protons. This means that the atomic radius is going to shrink. And when that happens, there's more energy holding these two things in place. And that means the energy required to pull them apart is much greater. So in the case of neon, which has a really small atomic radius, 0 0.071 nanometers, the first ionization energy is going to be huge. Often we're also explained this in terms of the octet rule, which states that the outer shell always wants to be full. And of course, this is eight electrons. And considering neon already has the octet rule fulfilled, it does not want to get rid of that electron whatsoever, hence the massive first ionization energy. Now for the next part of the question, I've already plotted the values just to make our life nice and easy. This shouldn't be something too challenging. All you have to do is line up the atomic number with the respective melting points, and they were given in the table above. So hopefully you got something pretty similar to this. Regardless, this doesn't really help our understanding, and instead I want to jump to part D. Now D is saying, based on their bonding when solid, explain the difference in melting points of lithium, carbon, and neon, and I've labeled which ones they are. So let's have a look at those values and sort of compare them. We can see straight off the bat that carbon has a huge melting point, and that should really ring home. You don't really think about a diamond or a piece of graphite melting at any sort of reasonable temperature. But if you think about neon, neon's always a gas. So it's sort of odd to even think about being solid, but of course there is a melting point and it's roughly negative 250 degrees or so. 
and lithium, its melting point is around 200. And we have to talk about their bonding when solid. This might be a little bit of a weird question, especially for neon, as we usually consider neon to be a gas. So I'm going to treat them on a case-by-case -case basis. So carbon. What sort of bonding does carbon have? Of course, carbon has covalent bonding. And what sort of strength does this have? Is very strong. Hence, high MP, where MP stands for more boiling, uh, melting point. Sorry. So carbon has this covalent bonding, and why does it have covalent bonding? Well, that's because it's a non-metal, and in addition to that, it has four outer shell electrons, and that means it very conveniently can form bonds. Very conveniently can form bonds with other carbon elements, with other carbon atoms, very easily due to the fact that it has four electrons. And of course, it's trying to gain eight outer shell electrons, so it bonds quite well. Lithium, on the other hand, is of course a metal. And if you look at your periodic table of elements, often it will actually tell you that those are metallic groups. So that means it undergoes metallic bonding. And this is not very strong. Hence, lower MP. So the metallic bonding involves your cations. So they'd be lithium plus cations. And they're held in a rough structure by all this sea of negative ions. And this is a rather weak structure, and the reason why is because these electrons can easily flow throughout one another. There's no rigid structure really defined there, and that gives metals a lot of their properties, such as their ductility, malleability, and of course, conductivity. Now last on the list, we've got neon here. Now neon, bit of a weird question, because it says based on their bonding when solid. When is neon solid? Well, not really ever, or at least we don't consider it to be a solid. And in fact, when we think of neon, we know it's a noble gas, and that means its outer electron shell is actually completely full. So the only type of bonding can actually participate in is dispersion force bonding. And you might have also heard of that as van der Waals attraction. This is incredibly weak. Because the only thing that is pulling apart, pulling it together, is these instantaneous dipoles that is dispersion force. That is to say, there's dipoles being created on and off instantaneously, and that's causing some very mild attraction. And this is incredibly weak, hence very low MP. Fantastic, guys. I hope that gave you some good insight into some properties of the periodic table of elements and, more importantly, where they come from. Typically, it's due to, due to the outer shell electrons giving rise to all of these chemical properties. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.